Today's High Performance Podcast is brought to you by Josh Vegan Digital. It's where you'll find our revolutionary blueprint course. There's only one place that you can go from zero to hero over a weekend by watching the incredible blueprint. It's everything you'll need to be that million dollar agent. Prospecting, listing, negotiation, and growth. Broken up into short 15 minute pieces, skip to the content you need now or watch from the beginning to end. Only on Josh Vegan Digital. Welcome to High Performance, the podcast featuring Josh Vegan and Alexander Phillips. Alex, without a doubt, the most important thing is your ability to be able to cut to the chase. And we really look at like fast and effective dialogue that absolutely gets you there. And one of the things I've noticed is that like a lot of agents will get on the phone without real clarity of purpose of that particular call. And then ultimately it goes for a long period of time without really cutting to the chase and being able to move the client. One of the simple things that we've been doing lately is that we've been uh, trialing a different approach to what we do with our open home callbacks. Hey, Alex, it's Josh. You came through Jones Street. Would you like to see it again? If you say yes, okay, great. I can do some tomorrow. Would two or four be best? Two's great. Hey, Alex, have you bought before? Yeah, I have. And what are your plans through existing? Might sell it, might lease it. Might... Okay, great. Would it be a value for us to pop down, give you an idea on what yours is worth after we take you through Jones Street tomorrow at two? So we're trying to make sure that literally within five questions that we've actually identified about, can we get them back to the property? Are they going to come down? Are they someone who actually owns locally? If they do own locally, can we get back in front of them to go and list it or at least have that conversation about potentially renting it out for them? How important is it for agents to get clear on dialogue that you know that works in your market so you can be seriously good at what you do? Yeah, so hi, Josh. Thanks for having me again. I think um, firstly is, well, you've got to be making sure that, you know, the phone call that you make, you're trying to get something out of each phone call. Like you, you, it's not just, okay, they're not interested in the property, see you later. You've got to try and work out, one, are they a buyer that can be progressed? Are they a seller that can be progressed? Um, you know, are, are they... Um, you know, someone that, you know, has multiple properties that they go into your database. So, yeah, all those questions are super important. And uh, I think a lot of agents think that building rapport with questions over the phone is like a really good way of like getting into someone's door. I find, I think, you know, people are so busy these days. Um, You've got multiple agents calling them. uh, They're asking all the same questions. You've got to sort of stand out. And I think a lot of that comes down to, you know, really direct, quick questions um, and progressing those, uh, you know, potential sellers or buyers. Yeah, the interesting thing here is that what we see is a lot of agents go with situational-based questions. How many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, how many cars, what size block would you like, all those things. Whereas I might just ask you one very simple question, hey, Alex, what are you looking for in the right home? And you go four, three, two, and literally, you know, up to five million around Bellevue Hill and you start getting that conversation right. Like one question can, can do a lot of heavy lifting. What are some of the favourite questions that you like to use when you're working with a buyer or working with a seller? Um, you know, it depends on where, where you know, where, where the situation is. If you're in in the house or, you know, you, you've just met them or, um, you know, yeah, they're, you know, over the phone call, you know, generally like the first question we ask is, you know, at an open home, are you buying or browsing today or browsing? I just live down the road or what number you're in, you know, do you need, you know, are you coming to get an idea on your place? Are you thinking of selling? Um, you, uh, you know, like that question you asked, uh, you know, would you like to come back for a second look? You know, this age, the property might sell in the next, you know, seven days. So you're starting to progress and, you know, create some urgency with it. Yeah, it's interesting when I'm training people about understanding the depth of the negotiation with a buyer. Something I heard you say up at one of your properties in Paddington was, you know, why this one and why now? And ultimately, we've extended that just to help the newer people to understand it. Hey, why this one? Why else? And why now? So why this one? Oh, you know, I really love it because it's got the highest brand garage for my four-wheel drive. Why else? It's got no stairs, which is important because I've got a dodgy hip or whatever. Okay, great. And why now? Well, we sold last weekend. Alex, that changes the whole thing when you're on the auction room floor, right? Knowing that urgency of that buyer. But do you think that it's just actually coming down to agents not being interested in that particular person and really finding out about them and their situations to where they go wrong? Yeah, I think they're not interested in that person because they might go, this is too hard or it's going to take too long. Yeah, everyone's. I think, the, particularly the people that are getting into real estate in in today's uh, market, are uh, quick. Quick, it's going to happen. You know, everyone's you know trying to make it. You know, right now, but that relationship that you start there might be you know a five year relationship before you actually get anything out of it. And I think this is the important conversation for any agent. You know, to start to think about the questions that you ask, Alex. How did you get good at dialogue? Like, is it just actually record yourself, play it back and see whether or not there can be some improvement? Is it about taking feedback from other people that you had around you at that particular point in time? Is it about saying, hey, you know what, that question just worked. I should try that again. And then once you've found something that works, just continue to use it for the rest of your career. Yeah, I think a lot of it is, you know, the years of experience, sitting around the right people, um, you know, in an open plan office, that's where I learned the most of it, Um, you know, seeing what worked, listening, you know, but to, you know, podcasts or when I was, I used to listen to, um, you know, CDs in my car of, you know, of trainers and, 
and then obviously implementing it and and doing it and and consistently doing it and I think a lot of it um, then starts to become nat- natural and, and the way you talk so you're not coming across salesy or, ro- or robotic which I think a lot of you know people that listen to you know, you know certain trainers whatever it might be might end up sounding a bit too salesy and there's an old school saying that literally if you wouldn't buy from you then don't expect someone else to buy from you so the way you sound is massively important 